All right, Vinny. Let's turn this program around. Let's, Let's talk about impact. That's no. Monday Nitro. I'm sorry, Nitro. <laughs> this is a fascinating. Haven't we suffered enough? This is the best thing we watched. Absolutely. It was also, in a lot of ways, the weirdest thing we watched. Right. In what way? It was any fucking mall. Well, there was. That's the first <laughs> thing I wrote down here. It's at the mall. So, a couple of notes. It is, of course, the very first episode of Nitro, September 4th, 1995. For some reason, on the uh, network, at least in the Xbox version, it's labeled as Nitro 79. I, I don't know. I don't know why either. So I had forgotten how weird the opening for Nitro was. It never really changed. It was a dark street with images of wrestlers sh- uh, shown on building facades mm-hmm. and then just random explosions. Right. You know what's funny about that uh, episode number 79? Uh, I'm watching on the... Uh, the uh, Apple TV. Apple gimmick. Apple TV. And and they've got like uh, shows and specials. And then they've got what to watch. And what to watch just said Nitro 79. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> Why is it 79? I don't know. Now, to be fair, one thing that I noticed about this was uh, people have this, this uh, false impression of what Nitro was. Like it just sprung up. Out of uh, out of the ether, like life itself. When in reality, what it really was was kind of an offshoot of WCW Saturday Night. Mm-hmm. They'd had a Saturday Night show, which actually did better ratings than Raw, and so they 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 essentially, I mean, they added Nitro and everything like that. But it's not like there was no. It wasn't like they didn't have television or they didn't have a television show that a lot of people watched. I mean, they had a show with a big audience. They put it on here on Monday nights. It was at the mall. But for some reason, I don't know why, but if you if you remove the mullets, it looked very modern. I don't even know why. Maybe it was because there was the Pillman match. Maybe because Ric Flair, Sting, and Hulk Hogan were all over it, and we still see them today. Yeah. I'm not sure exactly what it was, but it, it seemed more modern than Impact, actually. It was a 20-year-old, almost 20-year-old show. Hey, almost exactly 19 years ago, everybody. Yeah. That held up very well, honestly. 19 years and one day ago. So they were at a mall. I was hoping we get shots of guys in the mall shopping for their gear. I don't know if... Uh, I did see Samito in the crowd with a bag. <laughs> <laughs> if, uh, like, Randy Savage had got a Hot Topic, that would have been a great skit. Mm. Was Hot Topic around in 1995? I'm, I shopped there, so... Yeah. Uh, they had exterior shots of the mall. I really hope this was, like, stock footage. But it's WCW, so they very well may have hired a helicopter to fly around and shoot the outside of the mall. I'll bet they did, actually. Yes. The announcers were Eric Bischoff and in his announcing debut, Steve McMichael. The worst announcer (laughs) I have ever heard. Mongo? Mongo was... I was so annoyed with this man by the end of the show. He was terrible. He immediately comes out and starts calling him Bobby the Stain Heenan. Yeah. Ha, 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 ha. That's funny. Yeah. Oh, I hated him. I like it when he said the mall was apropos for a wrestling show. Yeah. What does In that what mean? Because <laughs> people are there? I Sure. It's all very commercial. I don't know. Um, We'll get to Michael later. Uh, the opening match in the history of Monday Nitro, Jushin Liger versus Brian Pillman. This famous match, actually. You know what's funny is, I I I remembered this was the opening match on the opening edition of of uh, of Nitro. I had completely forgotten they did Ric Flair versus Sting for the U.S. title, which actually got me thinking. I need to go back and watch the final Nitro mm. and see if they do the exact same match <laughs> move for move. I suspect they did. Because I'll bet it was extraordinarily similar. Yeah. <laughs> I know one thing about this opening match. I romanticized about it too much. Oh, yeah. It this, wasn't really that good. No, it was not good. No. No. I, I just like, first of all, Juice and Liger making his entrance in front of the Great Train Store. <laughs> That's right. Everything oh. they showed here it was just so between... The fact that it was the mid '90s, the fact it was WCW, I hadn't seen it for so long. The fact it was in a mall, like every camera shot has something I wanted to rewind and double check. Oh yeah, and, and getting the name of the great train store was part of that. Well, how about right behind them on the left hand side? There was a flag store. <laughs> how did no one go to the flag store? The wrestlers then I take. a flag store. All I noticed when they came out for this match was I had forgotten. 
how small that ring was. Mm-hmm. Ah, too. Holy shit, that was a small ring. And it's it's more the WCW, uh, the WWE had a big ring. 16 uh, or 18? I believe it was 18. But it was it was very, very small. And as Craig noted, uh, this match, I think, has been romanticized. Um, I guess it's not really fair to go back and, and judge a match in hindsight. But uh, even if you don't want to do that, there were a fair number of sloppy yeah. spots in this particular match. How did Flying Brian forget to do a head scissors? I, <laughs> he messed it up numerous times. He tried a Frankensteiner and... and Landed on his own face. Yes. To the point where even, I believe, Mongo noted that he'd screwed up a Frankensteiner, Mm. which was astonishing. Uh, Nick Patrick killed the drama with his shitty counts, infuriated me through this whole thing. Uh, Spot fest, and then finally uh, Pillman rolling cradle for the pin. Yeah. And the place went nuts. Mm -hmm. You're right in that it it, it did not live up to its own reputation. That's true. Time has not been kind to it. It's still a good match. Sure. And uh, the one thing I noted, and this is a positive thing, because what wrestling has become is a a bunch of spots with time wasted in between. When these guys were doing mat wrestling, it never felt like they were using rest holds. They were never resting. Mm. They were grappling, trying to get a victory. I had a limited amount of time, but yeah. Yeah. It was the best thing I saw all week. But here is... Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say that uh, you could almost look at this and go well the reason it was romanticized was because on the other channel on raw uh raw was having a lot of very boring slow-paced matches that's probably true it was nothing like pillman and liger but we have had raw on in the background here and Shawn michaels was having kick-ass matches with hacksaw fucking jim duggan Mm. so i don't buy that excuse for a minute I don't know why this this match was was romanticized. Maybe just because little guys jumping a lot, and was was cool back then. And we've we've, you know, like for example the 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 X division match that your son, yeah, ruined wrestling for him. Uh, you know that was way more fun than this particular match. Yeah. To be honest with you, now let's not get ahead of ourselves. He is not ruined from wrestling. I see. He's just a new By understanding. By the way, of it. when Jushin Liger came out, he goes. <gasps> That's that guy from the ROH pay per view. That's right. He knew. He knew. I was like, "That's my boy." I almost teared up. Craig, so, it's Jushin Thunder Liger. There's no one like him. He's eight years old. It's not like Austin Aries came out and he recognized him. Wow. Go on, Vinny. Austin Aries in 1995 would have looked very different. It's true. Probably would have looked like Cameron. <laughs> um, Cameron's way too big. <laughs> it's true. That's a good point. It's a good point. Okay, so. Uh, we were talking earlier, and honestly, I forget if it was before or after we came on the air. So if I repeat myself, I apologize. I uh, attempted to watch, at one point, the first episode of the Monday Night War TV show. Yes, this was before we went on air. I, I could not get through it because, as the saying goes, the winners write the history books. And there was just too much BS for me. But the two things I saw uh, were notable before I gave up were, A, uh, a brief clip of Harlem Heat Wrestling 1, Buddy Wayne. That's right. It's a short, but it's on there. Uh, two, and uh, what I remember about this was Bischoff made a point of saying that uh, Eric Bischoff said that WCW had been a small southern regional promotion in part because they had announcers with southern accents. So I had to fire them all. And they showed him the time he brought in Bobby Heaton and Jesse Ventura and Gene Okerlund. Southern accents are gone. So then here you turn on Nitro. Who do they bring in? Steve McMichael. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Luckily, everybody, <clears throat> the death of WCW will be out in a month and a half. So you can uh, read that and find out what really happened during this period. Yeah. Sting got a very quick promo calling out Ric Flair. My God, we need these back. Promos don't need to go 20 minutes or 10 minutes or 5 minutes. Just... Hand someone a microphone, say, you have 20 seconds to call out your opponent, go. Mm-hmm. Scream a little, bug out your eyes, get your catchphrases, call it good. This is awesome. Between uh, Liger in the opening match and Sting here, I have concluded that for the sake of your career, you should wear a mask or paint your face. Because then no one can see you age. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. 
Good call. Good That's call. why I do a radio show. I figured that out a long time ago. <laughs> or just disappear from all visual sight. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> we had a pre-taped promo with Hulk Hogan at Postomania. This really happened. This is a real place. Why did Hulk Hogan <laughs> come up with the idea of making pasta? I don't know. Is Italian roots is <laughs> Terry Bollea? Is that Italian? Might be. He's he's got some Italian in him. All right, but yes, this was just the idea that Hulk Hogan is going to start a restaurant and he's going to be selling macaroni. <laughs> like what? People can't wait to. I can't say it. Pasta mania is running wild, brother. That's what he said. He explained that he had been eating pasta all day, so he was ready for his match. Uh. I cannot recommend enough to athletes, don't do this. I love, Yeah, he goes, I'm slim and trim due to pasta mania. Yeah. Hmm. I was like, you're full of shit. Yeah. <laughs> Even more so. Yes. I also like, this is a period where Hulk, he was still very much Hulk Hogan. He was, in fact, slim and trim, mm -hmm. and he had the mustache, long hair, it was Hulk Hogan, and he just gave up on bleaching his eyebrows. Yes. <laughs> Black. <laughs> so the other thing I liked about this, and I mean, I, 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 I kind of hope I'm the only one who noticed, but it was great. They had a sign on the menu that said in big letters, Tonight's Fair. <laughs> and occasionally the camera would pan down so you couldn't see the top of the R in fair. And then it looked like it said, Tonight's Fake. <laughs> I laughed and laughed and laughed. So the next match was Ric Flair versus Sting. As they panned out, I had an epiphany here. How can you do a wrestling show in a mall and not have guys do their entrances coming down the escalator? It's a great Dude, question. You got me. That would have been awesome. That one night they did it on Shotgun Saturday night from the uh oh, that's right. from the Manhattan uh train station. Yes, and Hunter took the tombstone on the escalator. Hunter yeah. took a tombstone on the escalator and awesome. wrote it down. Yes. It was great. It was great. So uh McMichael referred to himself as a punch drunk jock. Kind of sad. <laughs> Sting came out to A Man Called Sting, which if you've never heard, you must all go to YouTube and listen to right now. Included such brilliant lyrics as, he does he does this, he does that. And it was not the worst song on the album by a long shot. What was the worst song on the album? Uh, the Steiners. Oh, that's right. Steiner line. Next stop, Michigan University. Became a wrestling All-American. Liked it so much, they went back and did it again. <laughs> I'm not making any of these up. Who's that howling? I don't know. Is as big as a boat? I believe it's as big as a bull. Oh, as big as a bull. It's a terrible song. It's awful. Is that a man or a woman singing this? I think it's a girl. Nobody else. And the friends of the medium, he's there to help. And all the kids, they go wild. And all the old people start to act like a child. Don't you dare cross that or get in his way. All the old people start to act like kids. Why is that good? I don't know. It's usually not good when the old people start acting like kids. Taking selfies and Ugh. posting new pictures to the online. That's the last thing we need. Smoking marijuana. Uh, Vinny, did you uh, did you go on the Great Power Udi's Twitter after I sent it to you? A little bit. A little bit. This is not the greatest Twitter you've ever seen. Pretty awesome. I, I, I love the one when he when he announced, unfortunately for all of you... I do not have any nude selfies that have been released. <laughs> yeah. Great Power Udi. At Power Udi, everybody. Go follow him. 
Incredible. Go on, B. I believe. Didn't Foley do a tour with Power Udi? I'm sure he did. Yeah. I wish I had after reading his Twitter. Uh, if you read Foley's book, I think you will disagree. He told me I sold better for ice than John Cena had two weeks after SummerSlam. <laughs> Which is a fact. <laughs> so, while we had all, I think, forgotten that Sting wrestled Ric Flair on the first and last episode of Nitro, I think we all remember what happened during this match. Because the bell rang, and they circled for a bit, and who should come strolling down the aisle but one Lex Luger? That's right. And if you were not around at the time, this was awfully, awfully big news. Because Lex had been spotted doing a run-in in the main event of SummerSlam 24 hours earlier. Yep. Correct. So this was a huge deal. Bischoff started screaming to get the camera off and have security take him to the back. Never... He- he was selling this like it was an invasion. Basically, yes. yes. Not not a dude jumping ship. Right. And uh, never referred to him by a name, although he did later. So, and then the best part of this, Sting and Flair were both distracted. And then they got over it and they wrestled. That's right. They didn't do a distraction finish. <laughs> that was incredible. Wrestling used to be awesome. So, yeah, uh, we talked about this earlier. Sting and Flair have probably had 20,000 matches. They were all exactly the same and they were all great. My favorite part of this match was Mongo saying he was stupefied by this action. Mm. My favorite part of this match, and it was just a little thing, they both fall out, fell outside. Flair, of course, pops up, hits Sting with an eye poke, and Eric Bischoff, as God is my witness, yelled, Vintage Ric Flair! <laughs> uh, what's funny is yeah. that my favorite thing was what happened right after that, because Flair... Uh, Took a few steps back and then went charging in and ended up getting pressed land back into the ring. But he couldn't just step back and then attack. He had to turn mm-hmm. and go to about half speed. But then he reached out and he essentially hit the guardrail like he was running the ropes. Yeah. Couldn't help himself. That was awesome. So Arn Anderson came out to watch in a jacket that was, in fact, straight out of the mid-90s. Uh, I forget the deal, but he had a program with Flair going on. And uh, here was where they mentioned Luger by name. And Flair got the figure four. He grabbed the ropes and refused to break. So Anderson jumped in the ring. Ref called for the bell. They never really explained what the finish was. If uh, Flair was disqualified for not breaking the ropes or if Sting was disqualified for Arn's interference. But whatever. So Arn started brawling with Flair. Flair bailed to the locker room. And Arn returned to the ring. Teased a brawl with Sting but changed his mind and left. Yeah. The action was great. It was a fun little match. It was it was every Ric Flair Sting match you've ever seen any time in your life. In all seriousness, was there ever a bad Sting Ric Flair match? I'd have to think about Keep, it, but I, I, I don't all think the same. so. <laughs> I don't think so. This was also every Flair Nikita Koloff match you've ever seen. Probably, yeah. <laughs> Actually. Scott Norton hit the announce desk very angry about something. Probably heard the commentary about my voice. <laughs> <laughs> he couldn't believe Mongo got the commentary that. job. I hadn't thought of that. When Michael got in his face, he had a, a great stare down. And, and say what you will about uh, uh, Michael the announcer, but when Michael the tough guy talking trash with Steve, uh, Scott Norton was pretty awesome. And they did not have this on the house, house mic. It was just picked up by the cameras on the floor. And before they could get physical, Randy Savage appeared, said if Norton wanted to fight someone, he could fight me right now. Jumped in the ring and... Bischoff and security held Norton back and never really went anywhere. I I, I guess they had to match the next show. Man, Randy Savage is just uh, overflowing with charisma. I know that's not like a... It's not like a revelation, but like sometimes... like It's been a while since I've seen much Randy Savage. But you, you just watch Raw. You watch all these boring people reading this stupid dialogue. And then you go back and watch Randy Savage being a madman. It's like, wow. Yeah. What a professional wrestler this guy was. Yeah. No wonder it's all the people talk about. You remember the macho man? Of course I remember the macho man. People ask me that every now and then. They'll ask me questions <laughs> like, do you remember the macho man? They know you write about wrestling. Do yeah. you remember the macho man? Macho man. Sounds familiar, but, uh, you know, <laughs> refresh my memory. Macho. Macho. So, on speaking of uh, people who, actually, there's no segue. Speaking of people who I had completely forgotten, I guess I completely forgotten, but Sabu wrestled in WCW for a while. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he did. They had a Sabu video package of the very first episode. He's coming. It was surreal. Mm -hmm. Absolutely surreal. (laughs) 
<laughs> He's messing with his mic a lot. What was what was surreal is I didn't realize he had had matches on WCW Saturday night that they'd actually taped the clips from. Yeah. Anyway. Crazy the things you forget 14 yeah, years later. It is. Bray Wyatt's dad cut a promo. Yeah, Michael Wall Street. I believe this was his debut as that character. Mm-hmm. He buried the new generation, which is what WWF was calling their roster at the time. He said WCW had the best wrestlers in the world from Hulk Hogan to Ric Flair to Vader and now Michael Wall Street. <laughs> he did have a great line about how he knew the IRS would be watching. And really, that may have been the last great moment of his career. The new generation is the few generation, uh, he said. He even had a uh, dollar sign on the lapel of his jacket, much like the Million Dollar Man. Yeah. Mm, yeah. yeah. Hulk Hogan versus Big Bubba. Actually, a really good choice for a main event for the first Nitro. You're trying to grab WWF fans. Mm -hmm. Show Hulk Hogan having a rematch with one of his most famous rivals. Makes sense. God bless the boss man, Bubba here. But I thought he was quite bad in this match. Maybe hmm. I'm the only one. I hate that stomping headlock. I hate it with every ounce of my being. And in... To be honest, to be fair, he was overselling to such a ridiculous degree. You mean when he would get his head tossed into the turnbuckle? There was that. And he and, would fly back and look at the ceiling for 28, 30 seconds. And then Hogan pushing me, took a bump. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I, was, I, was, I was fixing to really cut a promo on, on this guy. But then I thought about it, and it really made sense at the end of the match when uh, Ed Leslie... As oh. the Zodiac ran in, it, it hit me that this guy was wrestling Hulk Hogan. So the gimmick is you sell in the most ridiculous manner possible so that you become one of Hogan's buddies, mm -hmm. one of the guys he wants to work with, which ensures your employment. Sure. So at the end of the day, this made sense to me. But but watching the match, it was just like, this is ridiculous. He's just like, he's ridiculous in this match. Remember the match they had on Saturday night's main event where they were in the cage? Where he got suplexed off the cage? Yeah. Yeah. That was incredible. They took that suplex off the cage all around the horn. Yeah, I know. Yeah. And Hogan mean, blames his bad back on leg drops. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. Maybe it was 95 suplexes off at the top of a cage. So uh, we buried Sting's WCW theme earlier. I love Hulk Hogan's WCW theme. Yeah. I may be the only one. I thought it was great. But Michael said that Hogan cannot possibly lose to Bubba because he was too much of a technician. Is it mm -hmm. American made? American made. There are signs uh, from people who did not like Hulkster saying things like Hogan sucks and Hogan is a wimp. Mm hmm. He's rocking out over there. This is a great song. That is quite the toe tapper right there. That it that gets your blood pumping. All All right. It's time for action. Go ahead, Vinny. All right, so uh, Hulk, Hulk makes his comeback, hits the big boot and the leg drop. Kevin Sullivan and the Dungeon of Doom run out to attack. Oh, my God, this <laughs> menagerie of numbskulls. The Zodiac was just the worst. What in the fuck was Ed Leslie doing out there? I, I don't know. He had, a, he had his face painted, and he was wearing stockings on his arms, and he was gyrating in a gelatinous manner. And Kamala was there. Kevin Sullivan, was that it? Was uh, Shark there at this point? The shark was there, yes. yes. The earthquake. He ran in as well. So ridiculous. Yeah. So uh, Lex Luger returned. He hit the ring to make the save. Mm -hmm. And as they're both tossing bad guys out, they do the great bit where they're they're punching left and punching right, and they back up into each other and spin around and rear back and throw a punch. And they, they both don't, but they kept shouting at each other. That spot needs to come back, by the way. Two guys back into each other and turn around ready to fight. That's right. 
So the uh, Sting and Randy Savage ran out to hold them back and went to commercial. And they came back. Gene Oakland was in the ring. Luger, Luger explained that Hulk Hogan wore the WCW belt. That made him the only world champion. And Luger was there to beat him. He was sick of messing around with kids. He wanted to play with the big boys. Wow. I was hoping you weren't going to say that. That's what he said. <laughs> it's a terrible tagline. Now, their tagline was, it's where the big boys play. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So Hulk put Luger over as a star. He knew all he'd accomplished, but there were thousands of Hulkamaniacs standing, by, standing behind him, and he defended the belt against Luger next week on Nitro. Like ex- accepted, and he had a bit of a shoving match, and Savage and Sting broke it up again. It's so funny, looking back now, that uh, WWF was doing all of their uh, steroid testing, and then WCW just flat out says, this is where the big boys play. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Like, Jesus. And I'm telling you guys, as much as I made fun of the guy, you have got to watch this show and watch the Zodiacs run in. That right there is worth the the admission for this episode of of, uh, of Nitro, the debut of the Zodiac here on this program. It's just outrageous, this run in. So yeah, that was uh, that was Nitro. The, Next week, the last bit. This is real quick. They spent one minute. They just went to the announcers who recapped everything they had seen and said, here's what you're going to see next week. It mm-hmm. took one minute of TV time, and it made the show so much better. Dude, you remember how many times we've watched like these old shows on Classics on Demand, and they did the wrap-up like that? Mm-hmm. And it's like, every single time, it was great. And it, 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 I never saw a bad one. It, com- it completes the show you have just watched and also leaves you excited for next week's episode. Indeed. I know. And the lesson I learned from the one-hour debut of Monday Night Show is that in the past two decades, wrestling has gotten a lot shittier. <laughs> Well, just you wait. The lesson I learned from watching this is Raw needs to be an hour. That too. Well, that, that's right. I vote that we we watch the uh, one hour Nitro every week for a while because we are on track. We're we're one day off. Okay. We're doing it on Tuesday. Yeah, because right. because this it's September third today, mm-hmm. and and we watch the September fourth oh, right. one. I didn't even think about that. So we could be watching them. They'll be they'll be hyping up Fall Brawl in September. They'll be doing uh, Halloween Havoc in October, Starcade in in uh, in December, and we can do a week to week recap for a while, and compare it to Raw. That's my vote. 